This is Math 99. We're going to take a quick look at section 6.5 and in this section we are um, looking at properties of logarithms. And so I'll start with a pretty good one. Log base b of 1 equals 0. So this is log base b of any base uh, equals 0. Let's rewrite that as a uh, exponential statement. So there's the base, there's the exponent. Remember log spit out exponents b to the zeroth power equals 1. This is true for any number except b equal to 0. Anything to the zeroth power is 1. So that means log base anything of 1 must be 0. That's a good thing to have. Now, remember, logarithms are exponents, right? Like if I say uh, log base 5 of 25, the exponent is 2. And I want you to think about what you know about exponents. Like if I have uh, 5 squared times 5, let's say, to the fourth power. Notice when I'm, when I'm multiplying these bases, what I can do is I can add the exponents. So when there's multiplication that's going on, um, you're actually adding the exponents together. Or in that, and that's because you have two fives here, four fives here, and they're all multiplied together. So it gives you six uh, fives all together, all multiplied together. And same with division, except division uh, is subtraction. That gives me a couple of relationships. Uh, if I am, if I have some the same base, and I am adding these together. Remember, logarithms are exponents. So if I'm adding exponents, it's the same as in a singular uh, log statement of multiplying. So multiplying inside the log can condense out to adding the individual log pieces. Uh, similarly, division, if I'm dividing inside the log, it's just down to subtraction. So that actually lets me do some uh, manipulation of logs. And so um, I'm going to write some things down and then we'll do them. So here's three log statements. And um, we would call these log statements condensed. And the reason we call them condensed is because they're, they're singular log statements. Like everything is inside the log statements. So if they're condensed like this, we can expand them. In other words, rewrite them as additions and subtractions. Uh, so let me start at this middle one. Notice I have log base 7 of x times y. And that's this relationship right here. I have some multiplication going on inside the logarithm. Multiplication will shift down to addition. So this will be the like, same as log base 7 of x plus log base 7 of y. Notice I haven't gotten rid of the log. I've just written it as two different log statements. This is expanded, and this is condensed. Uh, similarly, if I look at this one, I've got log base 3 of 30x times 3x plus 4. So if I go to expand that, I could say it's log base 3. Well, this is 30x times 3x plus 4. So log base 3 of 30x plus log base 3 of 3x plus 4. And now that addition can't go anywhere. I can't break that up anymore. I'm okay with this answer. You know, this is like 30 times x. If I wanted, I could write this as log base 3 of 30 plus log base 3 of x, because those are multiplied together, plus log base 3 of 3x plus 4. That's expanded. All right, look at this last one. Uh, notice this is division. I have 3x divided by 5y. So how about I write this out then? Using that division, that division shifts down to subtraction. So this will become uh, log base 9 of 3x minus log base 9 of 5y. And now I can actually go a little further. I have some multiplication going on here, 3 times x. So I'm going to write this as log base 9 of 3 plus log base 9 of x minus, and notice I'm subtracting this whole thing, 5 times y. And then that negative sign can get distributed into there. So it get, goes to here, which makes that negative. And then it'll actually go to here as well. So that'll make that negative as well. That's just me dis, uh, distributing that negative sign into there. All right, so I've got these relationships right here. And if, I'm going to add one more to it. I'm going to try and grab them all here. And I'm going to take this multiplication one. 
and, and think about it a little bit. So if I had uh, log base B, let's just say log base seven, some arbitrary base of X to the uh, fourth power. Well, I know X to the fourth power is uh, four X's multiplied together. So I could rewrite this as log base seven of X times X times X times X. So notice I have four things multiplied together. So, well, whenever I have things multiplied together, I can shift it out to addition. So if I expand this, log base seven of X plus, log base seven of X plus, <laughs> log base seven of X plus, log base seven of X. So notice I have four of these things added together. So that's the same as saying four, log base seven of X. Oh, which actually, I shouldn't, if I have an exponent, I shouldn't have to do this every time. Notice that what happens is I just end up with four of them. So I can jump straight to there. So that gives me a third relationship, and it's this, uh, this exponent relationship. If I have log base B of M to some power, I'll say to the N, it's the same as N times log base B of M, right? Because it's this many of them added together. So there's all my relationships for expanding, uh, condensing, and so on. All right, so let's do a few more of these. So log base two of x to the 15th, if I wanted to expand that, well, it's this relationship right here. So that would be 15 times log base two of x. Same thing here, natural log, that's just a log statement. So this one become eight natural log of x. This one, one over x squared. Well, x squared, you know, x squared is x to the negative two power. There's two ways we could think about this. One of them is just to think of this as that. So this becomes negative two uh, times the natural log of x. The other thing is if we want to do, since this is division, we could say it's natural log of one minus natural log of x squared, and then that two, since it's the uh, exponent is gonna come out in front, natural log of one minus two, natural log of x. Natural log of one? Well, we know log of one is always zero. So this would be zero minus two uh, natural log of x, which is just that. Uh, this next one, log base two of the square root of x. Well, square root is a one half power. So this is the same as log base two of x to the one half. So that expands to one half times log base two of x. Just gonna move it down here where I have a little bit of space. So log base six of things from the top over things from the bottom. So these are multiplied together and this is divided. So one way to think about this is that anything that's gonna come from the numerator is gonna be positive. So log base six of x to the fourth plus log base six of y, because those are multiplied together. And then notice this is from the denominator, so minus uh, log base six of seven. And then my last step is this exponent can come out front. And that's expanded. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this one. Uh, log base 8, anything that's coming from the top is going to be positive. So I have 64 times x cubed. So how about 64 plus log base 8 of x cubed. Oh, that exponent's going to come out front. I'll just do that right now. Uh, plus, and then that's multiplied by this 4x plus 1. So log base 8x, uh, sorry, log base 8 of 4x plus 1. And then this bottom part is going to be subtraction minus log base 8 of 2x minus 1. And that is as far as I can go. That is done. I could evaluate this, you know, actually write that as a number if I wanted. And this last example for expanding, um, wow, natural log of blah, blah, blah. So this is like a one-half power. So I'm going to think of this whole thing to the one-half power. So basically... That means this is taken to the one half power, and this is taken to the one half power. 
So three times one half is three halves. All right, anything from the top is positive. So I've got natural log of x minus one. And notice it has that exponent of one half, so I'm gonna bring that up front, plus that exponent of three halves, bring it out front. And then stuff in the bottom, minus natural log of x squared minus nine. Now, it might feel like you could do more with this, but this is subtraction. We, we, don't, we, don't, we can't go anywhere subtraction when it's been something else fun. So we're done here. Okay, um, so we've been going one direction. What if we go the other direction? In other words, if I give you something that is, uh, if I give you something that's expanded, can we condense it? So like, let's say I had, so notice I have a log statement, just log, so this is log base 10. And things that are positive will have come from the numerator. Things that are negative will have come from the denominator. So this would be log of three times five up top over uh, four times six down in the bottom. And that, what would that be? That would be log of, that goes into that, two times log of five eighths. And that's condensed, right? Multiple log statements, expanded, singular log statement. And I wanna point out like this only happens when I always have the same base. If these bases were different, I would have to do something else. So I have three log base two of X. So that's the same as log base two of X cubed, plus I'm condensing now, one half is square root as a, as a power, minus four degree. Cool. Things that are positive are gonna go in the numerator. So I've got an X cubed up top. I've got an X minus one up top, positive, positive. And then since that's negative, this is coming from the denominator plus three to the fourth power, that is condensed. Great, there's one last thing I wanna show you and that's the change of base formula. And if I were to write out the change of base formula, it's, it's something like if I have log uh, base A of B, I can rewrite that as log base C, notice the C's coming out of nowhere, of B over log base C of A. So since C is not connected to A and B at all, this is my choice what I want this base to be. This is super convenient. So for example, uh, if I have uh, log base three of 81, well, we know that's, that's four, right? Because um, three to the fourth is 81. But if I didn't know that, or just to illustrate how this works, uh, this log base three of 81, I can rewrite these with my C as 10. So like log base 10. So I could say log of 81 divided by log of three. Now the advantage to that is if I grab my calculator, um, I've got a log button. I don't have a log base three button, but I've got a log button. So I could say log of 81, close off the parentheses, uh, divided by log of three, boom, is four. It gives me the answer. And uh, what's crazy, I think, about this is since C is arbitrary, I could use natural log, right? I could have written this as natural log of 81 divided by natural log of 3, as long as I use the same log in both numerator and denominator. And notice if I do that, uh, natural log of 81, close off the parentheses, divided by natural log of 3, get the same answer. As a matter of fact, I could change this to base 7 if I wanted. It doesn't do anything for me. I don't have a base 7 button, but I, but I could. So what's great about this is if I have to evaluate things like, say, uh, log base, well, let's see, 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the 4th is 16. So it should be somewhere between 3 and 4. But I don't know it exactly. So I can use that change of base formula. So I'm going to just change this to, say, like natural log. Uh, natural log of 10 divided by natural log of 2. Grab my calculator divided by natural log of two. Again, you could use log instead of natural log if you wanted. I get about 3.322. So notice if I were to go two to that power, 3.322, um, I rounded, right? Like I had to round up a little bit. So that should be a little bit bigger than 10. So let's see what happens. Two to the power of 
3.322. A little bit bigger than 10, not much, pretty big. So that's change of base formula, and it is, uh, it is glorious. It's a wonderful thing to be able to give you the chance to calculate any logarithm using your calculator. All right. Hey, that's it. Let me know what questions you have. Uh, message me, and good luck with the assignment.